everybody who is not immediate family to please be seated and the immediate family in the back of church, please. We are uh, very grateful that you are here today, and we uh, just have a couple housekeeping items. The restroom is through the center doors and to the right. Uh, at communion time, if you are coming up to receive communion, we will be doing this side first, and then once this side has received communion, we will move to this side. Also, we ask that you keep your masks on during Mass. It is required uh, by the CDC for churches to be open, so we ask that everybody keep their mask on. Again, I would like to welcome you to Holy Cross Church for the celebration of the Mass of Christian Burial for John Farley, Jr. His family appreciates your participation in this liturgy and invites you to respond to the bold faith prayers that are in the program. If you did not get a program, they are in the back on a table. At this time, please stand. Join in the entrance hymn, which is on the back of the program, Amazing Grace.
Good morning, family and friends. Good morning. My name is Father Joseph Martusello, and I'm the parochial vicar at Holy Cross Parish. And on behalf of our pastor, Father Coffus, myself, and the whole parish staff and community, we extend our deepest and sincere condolences and sympathies to you and your family and friends as you come here today to grieve the loss of our beloved friend, John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite John's daughter-in-law, Kendra, and John's daughter, April, forward to proclaim our readings. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, who we are near, brokenhearted. Praise, Praise the Lord. Protect me, O God. I trust in you for your safety. I say to the Lord, you are loved. And all the good things I have come from you. And I am so thankful and glad, and I feel completely sincere because of the protection, because you protected me from the power of death. And I have survived faithfully and will not abandon me to the world of the death. Praise the Lord who is near the brokenhearted. You shall show me the path that leads me to life. 
Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. Praise the Lord when you're brokenhearted. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The book of the prophet Jeremiah says, More torturous than all else, is the human heart. Beyond remedy, who can understand it? In the Gospel, one of the few times Jesus really showed his humanity was when his beloved friend Lazarus died. The Gospel tells us that Jesus wept, that he cried for the loss of his friend. He was moved to tears upon hearing the news. And so Jesus understands your grief and your loss that you feel today. Jesus weeps with you as you weep here today for John. Today you weep and grieve, and grieve you must. But we must not despair. We have hope in the promise of eternal life. We gather here today because our faith tells us that life does not end in death. It lives on eternally. John was baptized into the life of Christ. And St. Paul reminds us that if John had lived in Christ and had died in Christ, he will also rise with him to eternal life. This is our hope. It is the hope of the resurrection that we hear in the gospel. It is the hope of one day seeing the Lord face to face. 
It is the hope of living forever in eternal happiness and peace. And it is the hope of seeing John again there with all the angels and saints in heavenly glory. John was a husband and father. John was a good and loving man who loved his family so much. He also loved his country and served as a Marine in the Vietnam War. John suffered many injuries from the war and later became disabled. But that did not stop him from helping others, for he was strong and tough. He became a generous volunteer at Holy Cross School. John loved everyone, and everyone was family to him. He was a generous man and spent himself for others, like Christ. Service was the heart of who he was. So today, we say thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for your service to your family. Thank you for your service to our great nation. Thank you for your service to the church. And most of all, thank you for your service to Almighty God. And so the reason why we are gathered here today is because we come to pray and commend John to the infinite mercy of Almighty God. We commend John to the merciful God and Savior who suffered and died for him in Jesus Christ. We are here today because our faith tells us that God loves us so much, so much, that he will do anything to bring us home. We are reminded of this every time we look at a crucifix. Christ came to suffer and die on the cross for all, for you, for me, and yes, for John. The coronavirus pandemic has reawakened us to the reality of our own mortality. It has reawakened us to the most certain thing in life, that we will all die someday. The gospel we heard today reminds us that it will happen on an unknown day, at an unknown hour, and in an unknown manner. And we are also reminded of this by the unexpected passing of our dear friend John. Life is so precious, yet so short, one of the Psalms remind us that man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. So what is the meaning of the short life, you may ask? The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that we were made to know God, to love God, and to serve God here in this life so that we can be happy with him forever in the next. We are only pilgrims on this earth, passing through this valley of tears, and it is the valley of tears. But we are passing through to arrive at our eternal homeland in heaven, where there will be no more tears, no more separation, no more change and decay, we were not made for this world. We were made for God and God alone. And our hearts are restless until they rest in him. So as we say farewell today to our beloved brother and friend John, let us also consider how we want to live the rest of our lives. Let us consider whether we want to live 
for the empty promises of the world or for Jesus Christ and the promise of eternal life. We will have no regrets if we choose to follow Christ. And perhaps some of you have been away from the church for some time. Today I invite you to come back because Jesus is waiting for you in the tabernacle. I assure you that the pain and suffering, the cross of this life, will be as nothing compared to with what is to come. For St. Paul reminds us that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Eternal rest grant unto John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May John rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. God love you. Let us pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For John, who was given the promise of eternal life and baptism, may the Lord give him communion with the saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For all those who loved and were loved by John, that you may find comfort in your belief in the Lord's promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For each of you with whom John so generously shared his many gifts, may you too grow in the ability to share your gifts and lighten the burdens of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of rising again, especially John, his son Terry, his parents John and Elizabeth, his brothers Jim and Danny, as well as all his family members who've gone before him. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For John's family, especially his wife Luann, his children Sean, Kendra, Veronica, April, John, and Kate, his ten grandchildren, his siblings Patricia, Richard, Colleen, Frank, Christine, and Nancy, as well as his extended family and dear friends, that you feel the healing power of Christ in the midst of your sadness and grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us present here today, that God will bless us richly with the gifts he knows we need to fully celebrate life and recognize the new beginning which he offers us each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pause and make our own private petitions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary, and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant John, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all their clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel and be Just one announcement for how to receive Holy Communion. Out of respect for the Blessed Sacrament, please, if you are not Catholic, to refrain from receiving Holy Communion. You are welcome to come up and receive a blessing, though. And also, if you are Catholic and are not prepared to receive, you can come up and receive a blessing as well, refraining from receiving Holy Communion. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
A couple of uh, announcements um, before we continue on. First is Luann invites you back to her home at 210 Weston Road uh, following Mass today. Um, all are welcome. Also, there are going to be two military services for John. One will take place here in the front of church, and then we invite everybody to follow Luann and her family out, as there will be another military salute outside. Um, so and please do not rush out so that you are part of both military presentations. At this time, I'd like to invite John's daughter, Veronica, forward to share a few words about John. Hi, everybody. I have to correct something before we go into my speech. My sister's mom was left out. My dad loved her, too. We're a blended family. A lot of people know that. But she wasn't mentioned, and she was on there, and I don't know why. He loved you just like he loved the rest of us. And he's going to be watching over all of us, and you know he will because he's stubborn. He's so freaking stubborn. I stand here before you today, unable to cry, unable to feel because my heart is in, now in heaven. Daddy, you left us way too soon. We all know him by many names, but no matter what you called him, no matter what time of day you called him, Daddy was always there. He pushed us all to succeed. He always had stories to tell, and even though we might have heard it a thousand times, we listened. He knew how to make you smile when you wanted to cry, but sometimes he made you laugh so hard you cried. Some of us peed our pants. <laughs> I can stand here today and tell you so much about him. We've had a long history together. We go back many years. No one can change our love for each other, and no one can take it away. He was a very proud Marine. He served 20 years for the United States Marine Corps and retired a proud master sergeant. But nothing could make my father prouder than his children and his grandchildren. Each one of us held a spot in his heart. Even those of us that weren't his blood children shared a spot in his heart. He never let any of us fall, and if we needed him, he was always there. He was always a phone call away even if it was 3 a.m. He loved everyone with his whole being. He was the strongest man we all knew. He would give anything to protect us all from the world, and sometimes we needed protecting from ourselves. He lived a very happy and full life. He loved traveling south and sinking his feet in the sand. The last night he was with us, we talked about going south. And he said he couldn't wait to take us all. Daddy, I know you're there waiting, and we'll join you in that sand. We'll miss his hugs. We'll miss his big blue eyes. And even the little arguments that we all used to have with him. We'll miss his loud voice, even when he's only yelling at the TV, and you can hear him at the end of the street. We'll miss having breakfast on those random days, and the phone calls in the middle of the night when he's just thinking of you, when you take a day off from work and he's nervous because you forgot to tell him. He had his quirks, we all know, but he was everything to us. We'll miss him every day for the rest of our lives, but we know he'll be watching over us. I know we'll see you again at the pearly gates of heaven, Daddy, as long as you, Uncle Jim, and Terry don't get kicked out first. So stay out of trouble and hold it together because we want to see you soon. And though we'll be living full lives here on earth, I know you'll be watching over us. I know you'll be taking care of every one of us, your sunshine, your little M, and both your big boys because God knows we can't lift you without them and all your little ones too. We'll love you every day. We'll never forget you. 
sorry. Dad, just know that we need you every minute. And though you left us soon, we know you'll hold our hand. We know you'll be by our side. We know you'll watch over our kids if we can't. So know today and know every day going forward that even though you're up above, we're down below causing trouble because we wouldn't be your family if we didn't. Thank you, everybody, for coming. My dad was a very strong man. This was very unex un unexpected for us, but we appreciate all of you coming and joining us during this rough time. Thank you. I must be the strongest one. I, I try to do things without my glasses. This is smaller. And my sister handed this to me and asked me to read it. A family. A family is made of love and tears, laughter and years. It grows stronger with the passing of time, more precious with the making of memories. Sometimes a family is made of ones who don't like for a while but you love for a lifetime. It's a gift whose value is found, not in numbers, but in the capacity of love. Sorry, in the capacity to love, my apologies. It's the place you find someone to encourage you, believe in you, celebrate with you, and comfort you. A family is where your heart feels most at home because you're always wanted, always welcomed, always needed, and always loved. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother John may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother John, May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Let us pray. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of John, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon. I'm Richard Lawrence, chaplain with the Monroe County American Legion Honor Guard. Thank you so much for inviting us to be here this afternoon to honor our comrade John. Our military service consists of a prayer, the firing of rifles, the sounding of taps, the folding and presenting of the flag, and placing a poppy with the urn. When, if, for those of you who go outside, our rifles are loud, so those of you, uh, please take care if you have sensitive ears. Also, those of you who wish to participate in the final salute during the firing of rifles, place your right hand over your heart. And any military veterans may render a military salute. May the grace and peace of God our Father be with you all. We are here today to pay our last respects, surrender a final salute, and to honor an American who offered his life in service to his country. Let us pray. Eternal God, this moment is sacred with the almost visible presence of the one who has gone before. We ask thy blessing in all humility on the one who has served in peace as well as in war. We bow before thee in sublime faith, knowing that thou dost lead us on in death as thou dost in life. Make us mindful of the service nobly done, and finally may that service of our departed comrade to his community, to his state, and to his nation inspire us all to continue in service to thee and all mankind. We thank you for the gift of John, for the joy he gave all who knew him, for the precious memories that will abide with us, and for the assurance that he lives forever at home in the joy and peace of your presence. Amen.
This flag of love and devotion, now being folded, is a living memorial of the courageous thoughts of our comrade, the one you came here to honor today. The blue field represents the sky that overlooks our land and denotes the watchfulness of God, the Eternal. The red stripes tell us of the blood, sweat, and tears that have been offered and conquered by our comrade's devotion to the responsible freedom of his country. The white stripes boldly proclaim the peace that he helped to bring to our future generation. This is John's flag. This is our spiritual heritage. Receive it with the tears of our minds and the faith of our hearts. Amen. The flag is the symbol of our country. It was folded in the shape of a cocked hat, reminding us of the time of George Washington, the father of our country. Let the three corner folds of this flag remind us of John's love, honor, and duty to his country. Before you go outside for the firing, I will present the poppy. The poppy dates back to World War I in Flanders Field. It is the flower of forget-me-nots, also known as the flower of remembrance. All of our veterans' organizations have adopted the poppy as our official flower. I'll place the poppy now with the urn, saying that we will never forget John's service to his country. On the back of your program is our recessional hymn, On Eagle's Wings. <clears throat> 